This is Radar for On The Radar Entertainment Blog, coming to another set of MLB Observations, Hot Stove Edition for the 2021 offseason for Major League Baseball. This is week five. So, there's been a lockout. So, there was a gluttony of moves the previous week before the previous video was recorded. So, a lot of these moves are going to be small, minor moves, and... Yeah, so Jose Ozuna, remember him, the long, the Pirates prospect who never really turned out? Well, he's signed to stay in Japan and a three-year deal. So if you don't work out playing in America, you can go overseas if you're someone from another country. Masahiro Tanaka, who went back to Japan this past season, there was rumors that he would opt out and come back to the United States. Nope, he's staying put. So sorry for those who wanted him or the Yankees wanted to come back. DJ Peters, who was on the Rangers just recently in the Dodgers, he's one of these quad A first baseman outfielders. So going over Korea is a good way to build up your value because you're not that old. You can come back. Kevin Crone, brother of CJ Crone, who briefly played with the Dimebacks, he's going to Korea and he's like the slugging first baseman type of DH. Strikes out a lot, so he's a quad A guy, so it makes sense. David Dahl, who hasn't been healthy, but he has been an all star when he's been healthy. He's a good corner outfielder, below average center fielder. Just signed a minor deal with the Brewers. I don't understand that because the Brewers also just signed Abraham Almonte to a minor league deal. And Abraham Almonte makes sense for the sheer fact that Lorenzo Cain, if he gets hurt, you have yourself a natural-born center fielder in Almonte. Dahl's not a center fielder. And now they have Hunter Renfro and Ryan Braun. Oh, excuse me, not Ryan Braun. I'm, excuse me, Kristen Yelich in the corner spots, however you want to line it up. There's not going to be a bats for Dahl, and there's not a DH, so that makes no sense. Giants. Signed John Dunipler to a minor league deal. He's a one-time Diamondback starting pitcher. They just need pitching depth because they lost a few guys in free agency. And they signed Gray Fentner. Freddie Galvez, who I thought some desperate shortstop team that doesn't get Seager, Correa, Baez, or Simeon would go, Oh, no, I didn't get the top shortstops. I'll get an average major league shortstop in Freddie Galvez or even a major league second baseman like the White Sox could have signed him. He's going to Japan because he's like, with his lockout, I don't know when we're going to play. So I understand that. Christian Cologne and Tim Federovitz both retired. Christian Cologne was a number one draft pick of the Royals when they were rebuilding. He was a utility guy for them, but he came up clutch hits in the playoffs. So he got he gets to say, hey, I won a World Series. And he got first round money and he played for a good amount of time going to minor league rosters the last few years. And Tim Federovitz was mostly a backup catcher for the Dodgers. He did bounce around from team to team over the past five or six years. But he gets to say, I got to retire with a silver medal in the U.S. playing for Team USA this year in the Olympics. So one has a gold, one has a silver medal, and the other one has a World Series ring. So they got, they pretty much got a good accomplishment there. Twin to sign Trevor McGill a minor league deal. It's just veteran reliever to have. Yaskel Rios has signed with the White Sox minor league deal. That's the only really big move the White Sox have made, except for Kendall Graveman and keeping Leroy Garcia. Minor league guy, he could be deaf, he could be good, he just bounced around a bit. Giants signed Mauricio Lavera again, organizational debt. A.J. Cole, he's a starting pitcher who's relieved also in the major leagues. Going to Japan will help him out because if he pitches really well to start there, he can come back and make all this money. And Wilkerson's going to Japan, that's another pitcher. Albert, Albert Suarez is going to Korea, they got to take the opportunity. Then Jose Marmolo, who's been on the Mariners roster for the past couple of years as a first baseman DH occasional outfielder, he strikes out a lot. He's just the world's greatest defender, but guess what? You go to Japan and and they need a first base from DH. They're gonna first play first base or DH. They're not gonna throw you in the outfield. He's gonna get some good numbers there. Cubs have find Stefan Gonzalez Gonzalez to a minor league deal. Again, organizational depth. Orioles signed Jacob Nottingham to a minor league deal. Well, they think about it, Pedro Severino. They think about it, Cisco. They think about a win. They think about it, all three catchers they've had the last couple of years. So for them, it's all about the number one prospect. The number one prospect in all bases is a catcher for them to be the starting catcher. But having a guy like Nottingham, who's been in the major league, is good, cheap money to have him because if he's useful as a backup, you can always flip him at the deadline. Brooks Krisky, who we talked about last week, Orioles cutting, is going to Japan. Obviously, the pet gets some good numbers there, maybe come back. And, and MLB trade rumors, for some reason, did not report that Roberto Perez, the longtime starting and backup catcher of the Indians, signed a one year deal with the Pirates to replace. The, the Jacob Stallings who was just traded. Again, he, had, he wasn't healthy last year, but knowing the Pirates, if he's healthy enough this year and they love having guys who are really backup catchers, they could always flip him like they just did with Jacob Stallings. Brewers added Tyler White and Jonathan Singleton, catcher Jackson Reese, outfielder Garrett Whitley, and right-handed pitcher Mo Moises Gomez. Garrett Whitley, I thought, was starting pitcher, so I must be mixing up with somebody else. It could be two of them. But Tyler White's interesting because he's a... Natural born first baseman who has played other spots. 
big time prospect of the Astros, played for the Dodgers. He's bounced around. So again, this Brewers team, just say goodbye to Daniel Vogelback, but they still got Roddy Telez and Keston Hira. So they got enough guys who can play first base that, again, signing Tyler White makes no sense. Josh Singleton might be even more afraid of him because he was also a top prospect with the Astros. And after a year or two in the major leagues, they gave him this 10-year deal that opened up the door for Evan White and Scott Kingery and all these other guys to get these long-term deals, five to eight years, almost 10 years long, just for them to say, we're going to give you money for what you're going to now, not what you did, you know. And obviously the Kingry one didn't work out so far, and the Singleton one obviously didn't work out. Evan White, he's won a gold glove, so that's not something. And the Sox have done it with, you know, the likes of Aloy and Robert before. But that guy, he hasn't played Major League Baseball since what happened was he had got busted for drugs, you know, Pete, you know, performance enhancing drugs or recreational marijuana. So he's been suspended multiple times. The Astros took him off the four-man roster, so they didn't have to. So the money wouldn't go against like the salary cap for them, like in that sort of thing. So he was in the minor leagues toiling, and once that ten-year deal, and they didn't have to pay him any more. Bye bye. He hasn't played. He did just play recently in Mexico, so he's at least done something. But again, the Brewers have too many guys who can play first base, and I just talked about David Dahl signing with them. They got DHs there. They don't have room for these guys. So it's good that John Singleton got a job, but I don't know what. If he and Tyler White are going to split a bat to the minor leagues, okay. Giants acquire Tanner Andrews. Again, I just missed him. They're getting all these guys. The minor deals build up depth. Diamondbacks hired former Cubs front office executive Jason McLeod. That's good. Maybe he'll upturn around the Diamondbacks because there's something was wrong with them. They always were hovering around the playoffs, a wild card team. In the last couple of years, nothing. They have a good manager in Tor Lovello, but I don't know what's going on with the players that he's getting. Clint Hurdle's gone back to work for the Rockies as an assistant to the GM. That's where he had the most success, so it's a good thing for him there. And then Major League Baseball announced that they don't want writers and reporters covering players on social media or talking about them on MLB Networks. MLB Networks is showing baseball, old games and stuff. I think that's kind of ridiculous that you can't talk or report about players during a lockout. Like, it's the news. You should be talking about them. Tatis was involved. Fernando was involved in a minor motorcycle accident, so hopefully he's healthy from baseball injuries and from this because, you know, we don't want to see anybody die from motorcycle accident or their careers get ruined from them. Jacob Cruz, who's been a longtime major league coach, is going to the Giants to be an assistant hitting coach. He actually played his start of his career in, for the Giants, so it's like a homecoming. So he's been around the block as a hitting coach. Dylan Lawson and Desi Crucial have been added to the Yankees staff. Well, guess what? They promoted from within because they got some guys who leave. That makes sense. Ryan Christensen took his name off the list of potential A's managers by joining Bob Melvin in San Diego. They thought they could hire from within, but guess what? He he's joining Bob, you know, Bob Melvin there, and he gets to be like, I'm just good as a bench coach. I'm not gonna try to be a manager. I guess some guys don't want to be managers. Then the Red Sign O'Dowdy to a minor league deal, you know, again, organizational depth. Adam Plutko announced he's going to Korea again. Swing type of pitcher, he can definitely get value there. John Gant, a swing guy, can definitely start and relieve. He's done that for a while. Braves, Mets, Cardinals, you get it. Twins most recently. That will help him out. As Marini Alcantara, a former top prospect with the Cubs, who can play everywhere, is going to Japan. Again, building up his value because a lot of these guys go, wait a minute. Like now Mike Talkman's gone to Korea. We're either backup outfielders or infielders or catchers. We're back end starters or middle relief, we're, you know, front end relief pitching, like the guy who comes in the sixth or seventh inning or the fifth inning sometimes. Uh, we're now gonna, we're not getting major league guaranteed deals, even if there wasn't a lockout. But, but because there is, they're not sure if they sign these minor league deals because of COVID in 2020, are they actually going to have a, a full season and they're going to get what they need and they're going to get called up? So you take the money and you go overseas. Sometimes it doesn't work out. There's some major league players that have signed to play overseas and then halfway through the season they're like, eh, I, I really can't be away from home or my family. Makes sense. Yankees just re-signed Rob Brantley to a minor league deal, which is good. Because at some point, Gary Sanchez, or their backup catcher, is going to get hurt and he's going to definitely get playing time because you know that's going to happen. Now, other news is the Twins have hired former catcher Hank Conger, number one to like top prospect of the Angels, who never really was a starter was mostly a backup, a third-string catcher who played for other teams as well. Always known as a good defense catcher. So he's been coaching overseas because he's, you know, he's Asian. He has come to the United States back 
and he's going to coach for the Twins as their first base coach and the catching coach at the same time. So, congratulations to him because it's good that he's going to get a job here after his career, obviously, did not go the way they wanted. Now, I do want to say that it's great news that after pandemic happened and they couldn't put the players in the Hall of Fame to Larry Walker, Jared Jeter, Ted Simmons, and Marvin Miller were elected in this year, how basketball did two separate ones for each the 2020 and the 2021 class, where you then have the baseball did not vote anybody in for the 2020 class, 2021 class. So we're all still waiting on the 2022, as I've countlessly talked about players on my podcast for the past couple of years, and even on this videos about baseball, who deserves to get in, who doesn't. So they, because of COVID, even though you could have done things over Zoom, they pushed back both the early and the Golden Day era committee. So they, by pushing it back, there was nothing in 2020 during the pandemic, and there was nothing in this year's class. So next year's class is going to have, because of the early committee, Buck O'Neill and Bud Fowler, congratulations to them. Gil Hodges is going to be in with Jim Cotton, Minnie Minos, and Tony Lee for the Golden Day Era's committee. And, man, I feel bad for the Hodge, Hodges family because it wasn't that when he retired from baseball – you haven't heard from him. He managed the Mets for a pretty good amount of time. And he was never going to be an obvious Hall of Fame candidate because Steve Garvey's not a whole obvious candidate and they got similar resumes. But this dude, the reason why he wasn't in the Hall of Fame is because he just has 1,900 hits, but 370 home runs, and he's got 1,200 RBIs. And I'm looking at this, and he was an eight-time All-Star, won three gold gloves, and was a two-time World Series champion. Okay, so... I don't understand this. He played in an era where Babe Ruth and Ralph Kiner were probably the only people in the 40s and the 50s who were hitting this many home runs a season. Like, he was hitting 32 home runs a season, 23, 32, 31, 42, 27, 32, 27, 22, and 25. And you got to also have the fact that he missed two years doing playing the military. So when you play in the 40s and 50s and only, like, Ralph Kiner and Babe Ruth have all this home run... 370 is not bad, minus two years of military service, he probably would have been over 400 home runs, and he would have been over 1,300 RBIs, and he probably would have been a 22 to 2,300 hit. So I don't understand this, how they like to reward guys who play for like the teams like the Dodgers and the Yankees and the Giants, a lot of Cardinals, a lot of Hall of Famers there. You look at this, this dude has numbers that are amazing for the era that he played in, and that he contributed to managing in baseball as well. And I'm just like, I don't get how they took him this long. It's, I think what happened was it should have been when he was taken off the regular ballot after 15 years and however many years you have to wait until you're on the Veterans Committee, he should have been put and voted in right away. Like, I don't understand this. He's not an obvious candidate, but you have to. But the whole point of the Veterans Committee is you look at guys who, from different eras and you just compare it to when he played, how good he is, and what he put up, you know? So congratulations to Gil Hodges. The other thing is, congratulations to Minnie Minoso. I've been saying this, not just a White Sox fan, but as a baseball fan. The dude is not getting in for having just under 200 home runs or just under 1,100 RBI. He's got 216 stolen bases. He scored over 1,200 runs. He's got a, essentially a lifetime 300 batting average. And yeah, he's got only 2,100 hits, but here's the thing. He's a 13-time All-Star. You make 13 All-Stars, you win three gold gloves, you won the 1947 World Series you know, okay, and I know they do the whole publicity thing where he was playing on, you know, he was playing in, you know, the sort of, oh yeah, he played like every era and blah, 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 and they thought it was something that was cool, and he won the World Series with the Cubans, New York Cubans team, but here's the thing, the dude, if you weren't going to vote him in the regular ballot and you're going to make him toll on the Veterans Committee, you put him in as a pioneer, football, basketball, and hockey. They put all these people who contribute to the game under the pioneer section. Same thing in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. You got pioneers and this, this, and that. I don't get this. The dude, if you look at his 20-year career, obviously, him trying to play all, in, you know, in the 70s and in the 80s. But if you look at his numbers here, and you're just like, wow, how many doubles did this guy finish with? He's like 365 doubles. He's got almost 100 tr triples. And he got 216 stolen bases, man. I'm just looking at this like, you're not going to put him in as a player. You put him in as a pioneer, as one of the first black Hispanic players to play. If it weren't for him, there would be Roberto Clemente 
and Vladimir Guerrero and all these black Hispanic players. Like, he's the forefather of this thing. Now, you all love Jackie Robinson, and I'm going to say this is blasphemous, but he doesn't have Hall of Fame numbers. Yeah, he played all those years in Negro Leagues, but I'm like, Benny Minoso should have been in when he was alive as a pioneer. If you want to then say, okay, we'll eventually put him in as a position player, fine, you put him in as a position player later, but like, it is almost going to be 100 years since he was born. You know, he was born in 1925. That he's going to finally get his day in the Hall of Fame. Jim Cott, on the other hand, I've also been saying this. How can a guy who has 16 gold gloves, one-time World Series winner in 82, and, who, and yeah, three-time All-Star is not a lot, but the dude has 283 wins. He's 17 wins away from 300. And I've been saying this all this time on these podcasts and videos that – he has more wins than about 15 to 20 guys in the Hall of Fame. Like, that's a lot, okay? When you're only 17 away from 300, and you have more than 15 to 20 guys, and yeah, yes, he doesn't have 3,000 strikeouts, but he's got almost 2,500 strikeouts, man. It's incredible. Yes, he has ERA 345, but I, I don't say this. You say that Ozzy Smith is the greatest defensive shortstop of all time. He's got all those gold gloves. And you can say Von Rodriguez or Johnny Bench, great defensive catcher. He's in there. Mike Schmidt's got all the gold. Brooks Robinson, excuse me, and Mike Schmidt have all the gold gloves at third base. And then you got Robbie Alomar and other guys for all the gold gloves second base. And you got guys in, and you got guys in the Hall of Fame for all the first baseman gold gloves. And then all the outfielders who won their gold glove. How does a guy with all this many gold gloves as a pitcher, the greatest defensive pitcher probably ever, is not in there? Like, I, I never understood this. So I'm glad for Jim Cobb because he's, He's been a long-time baseball broadcaster, so he's still been in the game, so he's still around. Antonio Oliva. When I did my research for the Twins, I was like, wow, this guy had a pretty good career. I have his baseball card. I never thought that he's a Hall of Famer, but that's the point of the Veterans Committee. You look at stuff, and you figure things out, and I don't know why it took forever for him to get in. Like, it, it made no sense. He has just under 2,000 hits, so obviously Min Minoso is a better player. But he has just under 2,000 hits. He has 220 home runs. He's got that left-hand throw in a batting average, which everybody loves. But he's not a power guy. That's why he's not in the 300 home run club. That's why he's not in the 1,000 RBI club. It's because he's an all-around player. He was an eight-time All-Star, man. Three-time batting champ. That's why he's got a left-hand third batting champ. One-time Gold Glover and Rookie of the Year. And his, and his era, which was the 60s and 70s, he's probably one of the best right fielders in all of baseball. He made those All-Star games all eight straight years. So it's a pretty dominant run. So I'm not here to say nobody deserves to get in the Hall of Fame from these people. I'm just saying, it's about time that Gil Hodges and Minnie Minoso and Jim Codd and Tony Oliva got in. And it's just, you can nitpick here and there, but they belong in the Hall of Fame. So thanks for listening to another edition of the 2021 MLB Offseason Hostile Edition Week 5. For On the Rainer Tay Blog, I'm Rainer. See you guys next time.